Costume designer Beth Morgan contends at the Emmys this year for a glow about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling in the 1980s. Beth, who's your favorite character to dress inside the ring and who's your favorite character to dress outside the ring? Oh, it's a hard question because they all have um, such unique attributes that I love. Uh, I really enjoy dressing them for different reasons. So I wouldn't say I have a favorite at all. Um, I like dressing in the ring um, because of the challenges it, it uh, kind of brings up. And it's not every day as a costume designer that you get to the um, possibility to work on such an elaborate show that's so fun and has so many different body types and so many ha different things that have to happen in the ring as far as stunts and you know mobility uh, for all the girls. So I'd say that if I had to pick between the two things of designing for in the ring and out of the ring, like in the ring just feels uh, more unique and we custom make everything that goes in the ring. So it's all made to order, which is really fun. And, you know, we go through the whole design process of inspiration and picking the fabric. So um, I'd say I, pref I, I love doing the, the, the ring looks. And what about for those ring looks? How do you make sure that they look like they're made without a Netflix budget, even though you have a Netflix budget? Yeah, I think that we do a really good job of that. Like, because you know, basically, it's supposed to be that Jenny's making me. So we take it very seriously, the the homemade aspect of it, and you know, don't get carried away by like the you know the TV version. We try to really make it um, closer to a homemade, like kind of theatrical version. Uh, so we do that by like making sure we're choosing fabrics that would really be available in the '80s, and not only be available but be in a price range that Jenny could afford and could get at the local fabric stores in LA. Um, we do a lot of the um, embellishments are things that she would like piece together. Like on Zoya, she wears an epaulette that we like believe that Jenny could have gotten from the Army Navy surplus and then just put some glitter around the edge. So we try to just really use found pieces that somebody would, you know, Jenny is a skilled seamstress, but could really put together um, there and like, like the welfare queen coat is something she would have found at the thrift store, you know, by hitting the jackpot by that big white fur coat. Uh, you know, so we really, and like Britannica is really just a, a schoolgirl outfit. So she could have gotten that. So we take it very seriously that we want it to be uh, believable that they put this together themselves. Is that a similar process to how it worked with the real glow wrestlers? Yeah, you know, I don't, you know, I just know what we've, we all, is available through the um, the documentary and things like that. But you know, if you watch the real glow, they're even, uh, I think, a level more homemade than ours. I think part of it is that it's just about the splash of like a lightning bolt or something really simple to identify their characters. But because we have kind of different characters in our show, we just some of those design elements, you know, wouldn't work. So it is. It's like really about keeping it simple and like the really extreme high cut leotards on the side. And it, you know, it, it just is about like what, when you stare at somebody, what is immediately gonna tell you about this stereotype that we're trying to articulate? What was the most difficult costume of the second season? Okay, so the whole finale of the second season is the wedding. So those bridesmaids leotards that we made for everybody were really kind of like a uh, engineering feat. Because I really, because in the 80s, when you're in a wedding, you had the big, huge, puffy sleeves, and they were usually worn off the shoulder. Well, for our girls, they can't wrestle with things off the shoulders because they need the mobility of their arms. So I designed these so that they would be, during the ceremony, worn off the shoulder and then brought up over on the shoulder once they start to get in the battle royale. But, you know, we like I said, we're designing now the same costume for all 15 girls that are very different body types. So it's like making sure that the, the length of the cut on the side is flattering for everybody's body and making sure that the bust will be held in on everybody with many different cup sizes. And like, you know, so that was a real challenge and we had a time constraint and, you know, we just loved it so much. We think it turned out so perfectly and like with their huge veils and, you know, I had to convince all the girls to wrestle then in veils and glitter socks that are ruffled, like, you know, these huge ruffles in their face. So we had a really, really good time. 
Yeah, you've said that the finale has your most uh, satisfying moment from the show. Was that yeah. just the, the wedding sequence, I guess? It, it's many layers, but one being that the creative environment of Glow is such a passion for me, the way it's set up with the creators. And like even like coming from the top, the way that Netflix works, where they really allow their creative departments to to use their their skills and their research and they don't really ask for a lot of approval. So it's really when you're watching any Netflix show, as far as I understand, like you're really watching like a pure collaboration between the creators and the the artists that are making the costumes and the sets. So I feel like that's why the quality sometimes is so great um, because you really are having this aesthetic of these people that you hired and you trust. So that starting and then working for Genji Cohen, who like is just a really supporter of the arts and people's uh, talents and lets us kind of be. And then Liz and Carly, who are our creators, are like open to suggestions and you don't ever, you feel really safe. It's a very safe environment. So when that scene was originally scripted, it was scripted that the girls would wear their normal glow outfits walking down the aisle and just Rhonda would be in an outfit and a wedding dress. And I pitched the whole idea. So I was like, wait, but like, think about what it means to like be in a hideous bridesmaid's dress standing up for your girl who you know is making a mistake. Like there's something about the camaraderie of that as a woman that I really wanted to express in this scene where like Rhonda's gonna marry this dude who's like a fan that you have no idea, like it's not a good idea, but like you're gonna put on your bridesmaid's dress and you're gonna stand up there and you're gonna support her even though you maybe don't agree. And like, I feel like that's what the Glow Girls are about, like supporting each other and helping each other no matter what. So I really wanted that feeling of like, oh, you, like, you'll put on anything for your best gal. And then I just love the whole, like when you watch that shot of like Ruth in the booth, I was standing up there with her when there was like this shot and we were just like, you know, there's just ruffles everywhere, pink and gold and like, the set dressing and the flowers and the tool. And like, it was just like such a like creative explosion of chaos that it was just like, for me, a really amazing moment on set to like see it all come together and see people be, you know, the creators be open to this idea and then like it come to fruition. And like, you know, it was, it was really fun. And is that the episode that you've submitted for Emmy consideration this year? Yes. And was that a tough decision? Did you consider any others? Well, you know, I feel like I'm an Emmy voter as well. You know, I think it's really hard because it's so much content as a voter to watch, you know, if you're truly taking it seriously, like you're watching out. So, so I was trying to think of one that like, not only showed the love of the work in the ring, but also, you know, the real life of these characters, which we spend a lot of time with them, with them outside of the ring. So that was when I felt like had both, a lot of both elements and this, you know, really this moment that I'm really proud of. So. You know, it's hard to pick between all 10 because they all have such beautiful moments. And um, so you just kind of have to to pick your favorite. And that was my favorite. Yeah, and how do you do that as a voter for awards, be it the Emmys or Costume Designers Guild Awards, where uh, you have so much content? Like, what are you doing as a voter to kind of make sure that you've seen enough of everything? I take it really seriously, honestly. I mean, I hope that everybody does too, but like, you just watch a lot of content, you know? So you really like, you know, you just like, you get all the screeners. Luckily everything's kind of streaming and you can see, but like, it, I mean, even for the Guild Awards, it's so hard. Luckily people send out a lot of uh, materials, but like, yeah, you just have to like commit, like, you know, I'm already starting to get the screeners from Emmys. Like you just have to commit to like really sitting down and watching. So if I like, you know, if I feel overwhelmed, I just, you know, I always concentrate first on my category and then I go to best TV show because, you know, you can vote for a couple different categories and then I just go down the line and then I try to get as much like sometimes you don't, you know, you don't get to vote in all the categories because you just can't get through all the content. And how do you feel about how the costume branch is kind of cracking down on contemporary or period where a couple of years ago they disqualified uh, This Is Us after it was nominated because it had too much period content in it. This year in the rules for the sci-fi category, it says that if there is even one sci-fi costume, then it will have to be in that category as opposed to other ones. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. When I started and I was nominated as an assistant designer for my work on Deadwood with Janie Bryant and it was just two categories, you know, P 
period TV, like TV and movies and pretty much all the, you know, one hour period dramas um, kind of dominated the field. But then when you really look at what's happening in TV, there's so many great modern shows that I'm glad that we made space for that within these uh, awards. Um, and even like, you know, I, I spent the majority of my beginning of my career in sketch comedy and like we were always like a juried award and you don't even know if anybody saw your submission. So like, it's really nice that that also is now part of um, the greater awards. So, I mean, it's tricky. I mean, we're all, you know, I think anybody that's uh, at a level where they're gonna be nominated for an Emmy is like a certain type of uh, competitive person to like get this far in their career. So I think people really want the playing field to be um, available to truly who should be in the category. So I, I do think it's hard. Um, I know there was like, you know, cause like Handmaid's Tale, that's sci-fi, but really technically it takes place in like what, 2022, which would be contemporary. So, you know, there are all these fine lines. I mean, like, listen, you know, I just did a, 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 a show for Jen G. Cohen that will be on Lifetime. That's a contemporary show, but about the Renaissance fair, but it's contemporary. And I'm sure people, you know, cause people want to be competing against like, you know, like, you know, apples with apples. And like, if you're it, doing all these period elements, which are considered more difficult in our craft, you know, I feel like people that are just doing modern clothes are feeling like they are losing their edge and it's not really comparable. Yeah, I feel like you started with a lot of uh, period shows like Deadwood and John Adams and The Help. And then lately you've been doing more like comedy stuff um, uh, what are people signing up for when they sign you onto a project? What kind of skill set do they think that they're getting? I think that part of the reason why I've been fortunate enough to have this like really niche career of period comedies, which like not a lot of them exist, and I really feel like I've gotten to do so many amazing ones. You know, period dramas are heavy to work on. Like the hours are longer. You know, it's um, you know. It's all the things a one hour drama of TV is like the material's heavier, you're working later hours, you have a better budget. So I was really happy to be able to like start doing comedies at a period. I think um, part of the reason why people think of me for that is because when I went and started doing Key and Peel, it doesn't look like a normal sketch show. Like if we were doing a slavery sketch, it looked like you could be in 12 years of slave. Like I didn't try to make it like, you know, like Mad TV or some of these other ones where it's like all very over the top. It's like the comedy comes from the words and the acting, not from the costume. Like I never wanted, unless it was scripted, like to the costume to walk in the room and be the joke. Like the joke is a, is that it's super real. So I feel like that's what um, like kind of put me on this, this path to be doing really intelligent, ha you know, comedies that are, uh, happen to be period as well because you know, my background comes from that and I really enjoy it. I, I, comedies are so fun to work on. And so I'm fortunate that I've been able to like, you know, kind of get this niche going in LA. Yeah, this season you've also worked on a few more, including the Kaminsky Method and the Connors. You know if you'll be submitting either of those for Emmy consideration as well? Um, I'm pretty sure they, they submitted the Kaminsky Method. Um, the Connors, we did not. The Connors was, a, was really a fun experience. Um, and yeah, and the Kaminsky method, like working with Michael and Alan, was a, a real, a real joy. They're they're such amazing actors. Yeah, Alan Arkin has some kind of snazzy getups in that show. Uh, what episode did you submit for that one, and why? I have to. I think I probably did the pilot or the second episode that was a funeral with Patty Labelle and like all those guest cast and you know the like. Of black. I mean, Alan Arkin was so fun to dress. He had this tailor who I'm totally gonna forget their name from Seville Row that he loved that had like, he was like in telling me the story, like in London on a movie and he like had a day off. It was like raining and he just like decided to go on Seville Row and then walked in this place. Um, is it Anderson? Oh my God, I'll have to send you the link. Anyway, they're so such amazing people. And he bought a suit and he said, you know, I, I would really love to get a suit made. We end up meeting them at the Beverly Wilshire. They were in town to see clients and we, we ordered a, many of his suits from there. And, a, and a D'Amico, who's this other uh, uh, tailor in New York, who also uh, had made his tuxedo when he won for 
uh, the Academy Award for Little Miss Sunshine. So we worked with both of them and they sent us such beautiful stuff and you know, and then we were able to, to you know, fill it out with some stuff from LA and he looked so fantastic. He was very uh, happy to look so polished, you know, and, and put together as an agent. So it was, it was you know, a real joy to work with him because we got to just like touch beautiful silk suiting and pick out these fabrics and we had a, a really great time. And with all these shows, did you return for Glow season three? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, finally, I guess in honor of Easter weekend, can you tell us any Easter eggs that you've hidden in the show uh, that maybe people have not have noticed? Oh, well, there is, we did a collaboration with Reebok. I designed a pair of Reeboks for Glow um, season two that were then available, That I think they're still available on Reebok.com. So at, in the finale episode of season two, both Allie, and, both Ruth and um, uh, Debbie wear the shoes that we designed exclusively for Glow. All right, well, uh, Beth, thanks very much. Uh, good luck at the Emmys and to our viewers, uh, please subscribe and go to Gold Derby to log your predictions for the Emmys. Okay, great, thank you so much.